Hello and happy Valentine's Day. Even if it's a few days late, I wanted to be sure and wish you that, okay? Today, we're going to try something really, really different, and that might be a costume change, because this week, we actually are celebrating three big holidays or celebrations. Maybe you haven't heard of one of them, but what I'm talking about is uh, we have Chinese New Year, which kicked off last week on the 12th, but is continuing for 16 days. And then we have Valentine's Day. And then we have Mardi Gras, which is on the 16th. Plus we have a whole lot of other things to think about. So let's start with the calendar. First of all, uh, we have on the 14th, Valentine's Day. It's Library Lovers Day. And it's Ferris Wheel Day because the 14th is the birthday of George Washington Gill Ferris, who was born in 1859. And he is the one that invented the Ferris wheel. On the 15th this year, we're celebrating President's Day and celebrating basically Abraham Lincoln, whose birthday was last week, and George Washington, whose birthday is next week. It is also National Gumdrop Day. Maybe you got some candy and gumdrops for Valentine's Day. And Susan B. Anthony was born on the 15th in 1820. The 16th, nylon. Remember nylons? Nylon was patented by DuPont in 1937. King Tut's burial chamber was opened in 1923. Remember the curse of King Tut, where some of the first people into the tomb uh, died, mysterious deaths. Also this year, Mardi Gras is being celebrated. Uh, that is considered Fat Tuesday, and we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. The 17th is Random Acts of Kindness Day. It is also National PTA Founders Day, PTA began in 1897. The 18th, our former planet Pluto was discovered by Clyde Tombaugh in 1930. Currently, it's not considered a planet, although there is a belief that there is a broken up planet further out, the mysterious 10th planet, because of gravity readings that we've gotten on some satellites. The 19th, that was when the phonograph was patented by Thomas Edison in 1878. Also, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood, a well-known children's television show, debuted on that date in 1968. And the last one, and we've got so much packed in this week, on the 20th, John Glenn orbited the Earth in 1962 in the Friendship 7 space capsule. He was the first person to orbit the Earth. The toothpick was patented on the 20th in 1872. And here's a great way to end the week. The 20th is Love Your Pet Day. Boy, I'd sure like to say a lot more about that, and maybe I will next week. But we're going to start with the Chinese New Year. And you need to know I'm wearing my Chinese, what's called a happy coat. I don't know how to say that in Mandarin or Cantonese, but this is my Chinese happy coat. And this is the year of the ox. Uh, the ox is the second of the Chinese zodiac animals. And according to one myth, the Jade Emperor said the order would be decided by the order in which they arrived to his party. The ox was about to be the first to arrive, but then the rat tricked the ox into giving him a ride. Just as they arrived at the Emperor's palace, rat jumped down and landed ahead of ox. So ox is the second in the 12 year cycle. People who are born in the year of the ox and every 12 years it starts over are hard workers, intelligent and reliable, but they're never demanding of praise. 
They are slow and steady, just like an ox. As far as health and lifestyle, like the wild oxen that run freely in the fields, the people of the ox year are healthy and fit. Hospital visits are rare, but sometimes it can lead to overconfidence. They should not neglect their health during their youth. They can be workaholics and sometimes go days with minimal food and rest and also have irregular diets. In the year of the ox, 2021, uh, it's a time when ox people need to cultivate relationships and work on support of family and friends. Well, that sounds like a good idea for all of us to remember. And here's 10 interesting facts about Chinese New Year. But while I'm doing that, I want to show you, they're so good with paper arts. This, you can see how flat it is. Well, when I open it up like an accordion, this actually opens up to be a good luck lantern. And you can see the style and the work on it and the fringe on the bottom. And you hang this up for good luck because red is a good luck color. So let's look at some other things we can find out about the Chinese New Year. Of course, they usually have parades, not this year, but usually they do. And they have dancing dragons and it opens up. And I used to have the kids in my schoolroom make these long, 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 long dragons. And you can see Here's this dragon and people are running with it. And here's what the head looks like. You can see that part, okay? Uh, the date varies um, because the Chinese New Year is on the lunar cycle. So it changes every day. The Chinese New Year always falls between January 21st and February 20th. So this year it's a little bit on the late side, but not much. The holiday, oddly enough, is not called Chinese New Year's for the Chinese, but Spring Festival. And this is because uh, back around 1900, they discovered Western Civilization's New Year, which was January 1st. So to avoid confusion, they started calling this holiday Spring Festival. And it is that because of the traditional solar calendar, while winter weather is still going on in China, the start of spring marks the end of the coldest part of winter when the Chinese can traditionally look forward to the beginning of spring. Now I mentioned that it's the year of the ox also Every Chinese New Year starts with a new animal zodiac year. And so, like I said, uh, the most lucky one is, or the luckiest one is the year of the dragon. And that comes in years that are divisible by 12. Number four, this festival, believe it or not, is celebrated by more than one fifth of the world's population. It's China's winter vacation week. Like for us, it's between Christmas and New Year's. Schools in China get about a month off and universities even more. China, Indonesia, Philippines, Vietnam, South Korea, North Korea, Malaysia, Brunel, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Macau. They all celebrate it, so it's millions and millions of people. The fifth fact is that billions of red envelopes are exchanged with money or candy inside for the children. It's a very big holiday in London and Hong Kong. In London, in their downtown China section and Trafalgar Square, in Hong Kong, it's also a big day for horse racing and gambling. Uh, also, usually 
4% of the world is traveling that day because they are going back to their hometowns to celebrate with their families. Last year or the year before, there were three and a half billion, billion with a B journeys in China. In our country, we have a lot of people travel at Christmas, but less than a hundred million. Uh, because of the COVID-19 pandemic still raging in parts of China, they are taking extreme measures to make sure people do not travel but stay inside their city. There is also the world's biggest annual fireworks displays. You know, the Chinese were the ones who invented fireworks. Now, near the end of the 16 days, the Chinese hold what's called the Lantern Festival. And I don't have my lanterns out other than my paper one, but they use real ones and they light them and they float them on their rivers and they also hang them in tree branches. And there's the emperor, look at that fat emperor. Being fat is actually a very good sign for the Chinese more than for Western people. So the Lantern Festival will end the 16 days in about two weeks time. So anyway, I want to wish you a happy Chinese New Year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off my coat and I'm going to switch in a little bit. I'm just going to have my heart earrings for Valentine's Day. And red is also the color of love or passion. You know, when you give roses to your sweetheart, which is one of the top three gifts, flowers and chocolates are um, very, very big and also um, stuffed animals. Perfume, that's big too. But red roses are a sign of passion. Yellow means loving friendship and white is for sorrow if you've had a loved one pass in the past year. So I just wanted to talk a little bit about St. Valentine's Day. We know there were at least three different saints on the Catholic calendar named Valentine. We know that the legend of Valentine says that uh, there was a Catholic priest, probably more than one, who made it possible for Christian couples to get married. Now, cruel Claudius, as he was known, was the emperor of Rome. He had forbid his soldiers from marrying or for any young people to marry because he figured he had a tougher army if they did not get married. But the Christian couples wanted to wed. And so Valentine would secretly counsel the young lovers and then marry them. So <clears throat> there is a little confusion about the true identity of St. Valentine, but we know that there were at least a dozen saints plus a pope plus a woman, Valentinus, with that name. Valentine is not only the patron saint of lovers, but beekeepers and epilepsy. Go figure, I don't know why. We know that he was uh, actually put to death by the Roman emperor on the 14th of February. Not too long before he died, there was a little blind girl that had come to see him because the children absolutely loved him. He prayed for her and they say she regained her sight. He also loved to send cards and letters to encourage young people. And he sent her one and he signed it, love from your Valentine. And so that became one of the things that they used to remember him and of course we send cards and candy and flowers. Do you know that uh, Valentine's Day is the biggest day of the year for flowers? I did want to show you something I found with these old antique cards. Take a look at some of these drawings. Old, old antique cards that go back like 40, 50 years, just beautiful cards. And I wanted to ask you, do you know who some of the most famous couples are? 
Well, we've got Romeo and Juliet. We've got Anthony and Cleopatra, who were played by the famous Richard Burton. And who did you say? Oh, yes, Elizabeth Taylor. Well, now I'm going to have to get ready for a costume change. So I'm going to stop recording for a minute. Well, welcome back. I have switched it up for Mardi Gras. And you can see I have on my mask and I don't know how well I'll do with this, but I will try. Also, I'm wearing green and I have lots and lots of bling because beads have been an important part of Mardi Gras since they were first thrown off a float back in the 1870s. I also have some feathers and I have my costume, which I'm getting ready. And you know, you cannot even be in the parade on a float unless you wear a mask. And chances are I would put some of these feathers up in my hair. That's what I would do. But for now, I'm just showing you the costume. There's a butterfly on the back. And of course the colors for Mardi Gras are blue, uh, not blue, but purple, gold, and green. Those were the family colors of a visiting European count back in the 1800s when uh, they decided to make it official. Of course, they've been celebrating Mardi Gras for a lot longer than anybody recognizes. Now, Mardi Gras and Carnival are the same celebration. And they came over from Europe and it may go all the way back to spring and fertility celebrations during the days of the Romans. New Orleans did not host the first North American Mardi Gras. We think it arrived March 3rd, 1699. I gotta take this off guys so I can read better, I'm sorry. I know. Boy, I'll do anything to get a good lesson across to you, won't I? I do like this mask, though. I think it's really, really Mardi Gras-ish. Wish I could go somewhere to wear it this year. But the first one was hosted by the explorers, uh, the French-Canadian explorer, Pierre Lemoyne d'Iberville, who camped about 60 miles down river from the future site of New Orleans. His men realized, hey, this is Fat Tuesday and back in France. So they named that point du Mardi Gras and held a small party. And later French soldiers and settlers feasted in warm masks in the newly founded city of Mobile in Alabama. So it wasn't really but Mobile still claims to have the oldest annual Mardi Gras celebration. But I have to say, New Orleans really knows how to live it up. Now, <clears throat> there were secret societies and they followed and built parades and had balls and other festivities. And then later they became not so secret as more and more people wanted to get in on the celebrating. Fat Tuesday is the day before Lent starts, which is a time in the Christian church of repenting. And it's a very solemn, serious time that leads up to Easter. So the Fat Tuesday is your last chance to live it up, to party, to eat rich food and be with your friends and do all of that before you have to start your fasting during Lent. Mardi Gras was occasionally canceled uh, because during the Civil War, World War I, World War II, and during the yellow fever pandemic in the 1870s, as well as it's been canceled because of COVID-19. This is the second year in a row that it has been banned. And so what did the people decide to do. They didn't want to keep the designers and artists and painters and all this big industry 
out of work. So they changed the name this year. Since the parade was canceled, they changed it to Yardy Gras. And instead of big, beautiful floats that are kept secret until the day of the parade as to what their designs are, they people have been decorating their houses and it's been bringing the neighbors together. And then the city came out with a map. More than 3,000 people have decided to decorate their homes. And it's brought these different neighborhoods much closer together. Well, in closing, I want to do a slideshow for you. So I've got my granddaughter here. She's my technical person. I'm going to share my screen. And I've put together a slideshow for you called Yardy Gras. Let me ask her if it's working. Espy, how's it look? Espy? Okay, so this is Yardy Gras 2021. We never may never see this again, but this is really unique this year. This first one I really love because this owner gave a nod to all the frontline workers who have been protecting us during the pandemic. A, a New Orleans Popeye's chicken place decorated their storefront with a banner recognizing nurses, doctors, police officers, and the armed forces. And they also added life-size statues of workers on the rooftop, saluting those who will be driving the route uh, and passing by to see the decorated homes. Now we're gonna go to the second one. Let's see. Okay, now what would Mardi Gras be without jesters? And there's the colors again, the purple, the green, and the gold. Uh, I think that this jester is setting a record for being the tallest jester in the world. Look at, he's almost two stories high. He has a Mardi Gras emblem, and this is one of the most important Mardi Gras decorations to include in a float. It would be like forgetting the purple, green, and gold beads. You cannot have Mardi Gras without the beads and a jester. In this one, it's called Love at the Bayou. And it's a play on the words, how sweet it is in Louisiana Bayou. Before you climb the steps, guests are greeted with two crocodiles. I don't know if we can really see them. Oh yeah, here's one. Here's the other one about to open its mouth. So you better be careful there. And so they really went all out on what they're doing there. Next one is a little political in nature. This is a Georgia on my mind house float. Highlights politicians, Stacey Abrams, Raphael Warnock, John Ossoff, Short, Shorty Chisholm, Shirley Chisholm and John Lewis. And it says good trouble and bright future and then there's Georgia peaches hanging on either side of the house. So obviously these people came from Georgia. This one is a nod to St. Dolly. The house on St. Charles Avenue went for a St. Dolly tribute. The house float recognizes Dolly Parton for her Southern roots in music with two large scale guitars. Look at those in pink. Here's one. Here's the other. And a full body cutout of Dolly herself. A yellow poster with vaccine written on it. And they have music that plays to the tune of Parton's Jolene. And instead of saying Jolene, they say vaccine. Thanking the singer for her donation towards funding for the COVID-19 vaccine. I didn't realize that she was one of the people that helped fund it. This house recognizes the nine muses. Greek mythology 
and the nine muses took over the crew of muses cosmos house it's kind of like fraternities the crew members have a house where they meet their secret society meets detailed portraits of all nine muses Calliope, Urania, Palminia, Irado, and the rest of them are hugging the front of the house. And I'm sure that they have got lots of music also playing. This one is a nod to unicorns. It is the mystic crew of unicorns. This house opted for a non-traditional color sequence and pastels. Life-size unicorn motifs line the staircase with bright, frilly textures. Chance to really be creative this year. This is the Birds of Bulbancha. The Birds of Bulbancha House is another installation of the crew of Red Beans House float projects. It honors the Choctaw Indian name for the land. The house float on LePage Street can be seen from many streets away with its vibrant color palette and unique designs. It might even light up at night. And of course, this one is Dr. Seuss themed house float. All of the Dr. Seuss favorite characters are there. There's thing one, thing two, there's cat in the hat, and there's other ones there too. Another cruise project, the house was nicknamed Crew de Seuss. This is in a wealthier district of New Orleans and they have hired, they will hire live musicians each night who will be playing some of the local music. It is a circus thing. If you've ever experienced Mardi Gras in person, you know it has a bit of a circus feel. There's food, music, and entertainment everywhere. And this house captured it perfectly with all of the circus theme details. You see the elephant, you see the lion, you see the popcorn, you see the balloons, and many, many other things as well. And then there's dinosaurs, a dinosaur themed house. This yard is decked out in full dino grass decor. And it looks like a few very real looking dinosaurs are here too. The accents of the traditional Mardi Gras colors, purple, green, and gold can be found throughout the scene. And my last one on my slideshow is Zydeco Pioneers. This is in a notable NOLA location. The Academia Hayride House paid homage to Zydeco Pioneers, Buzu Chavez, Clifton Chenier, and the Cajun Hank Williams. There's Hank. With an accordion cut out up at the top, each of the male talents is honored with his own personalized cutout. An instrument. The crew of Red Bean sponsored the decorations as part of their Yardy Gras house floats. Well, I'm going to stop there and wish you a very merry week. As you celebrate, my gosh, I don't know which one to pick. Which costume should I wear? Should I put my mask back on? What should I do? I'm looking forward as we visit again next week. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day.